Okay, so the next boat project is going to be replacing the glow plugs. Now, glow plugs go into the engine. They're a little different than spark plugs. Diesels use glow, glow plugs. And these are Westerbeek glow plugs. You know, maybe I could have gotten a part that was compatible, but I didn't know exactly the size and dimensions, so I just went ahead and got their ones that are spec for the engine. And um, they're not cheap. <laughs> so, uh, once I uh, can figure out what uh, compatibles are, I'll, I'll get some of those in reserve. But anyways, so this is what a glow plug looks like. It, uh, it's got a little uh, terminal that uh, when DC power goes through it, you know, I just take it out. When DC power goes through it, it, uh, it makes the tip hot. And this goes down into the engine, into the combustion chamber of the diesel. So to start the engine, you hit trip a solenoid, you flip a switch or push a button. Uh, puts DC current through this, ideally, and it gets hot, and then it makes it easier to start the engine. The engine will crank over. Uh, right now I'm cranking it on pure combustion. I'm killing my starter. So I have no idea how hard it is to put these in. Everybody says, oh, it's so easy. We're going to find out. Okay, so I've disconnected the battery, and I want to make sure that there's no power going to the engine. So I'm going to try this. Ideally, you get no town tone. We get no alarm, we get nothing on the needles, we get nothing. All right, we got nothing. We have a disconnected battery. Good. All right, so I have taken off the engine hatch and let's see if I can figure out uh, the best way to access the glow plugs. It might be from the companion way. Kill the 110. Get the heater out of the way. It's nice and warm in here, anyways. Yeah, and that's going to be the best way to get to the glow plugs. The glow plugs are just right here, there, and there. So I'm going to disconnect the uh, the power, uh, take off. There's a, a steel bus bar there, and then uh, see if I can unscrew the glow plugs. So yeah, there's black dust kind of all over the engine. And you're probably saying, hey, what is that black dust all over the engine? I'll tell you what this black dust all over the engine is. The, uh, the first alternator belt that I put on was an original part with a you know 1986 fabrication date. I should have thought that one through better. Um, the belt literally tore itself. It disintegrated itself. And the black dust is uh, dust from that original belt. This is part of the belt. And um, I've replaced the belt with... Uh, this uh, this generic belt from AutoZone, which is doing great, and uh, I just got to clean off black dust. I'm trying not to get that black dust down inside the the engine, the the combustion cylinders. All right, so here's the glow plug right there. There's the glow plug. There's two of them, one there and one there. So I'll disconnect this cable. This is supposed to feed 12 volt. I assume that it's setting power. Um, let's find out. But, you know, even if it's not, then, well, the glow plugs have to go. They're 1986 vintage, so, or however old the engine is. And then I'll uh, unscrew the two, blow, the two glow plugs, and I'll put new glow plugs in and hook it all up again. And, of course, all boat projects have to be done one-handed. Now, if I have any luck, I won't drop this down into the bilge, which has dirty oil and water in it. Okay, put that in my pocket. And here's the cable. There's a 12 volt power cable right there. Now, 
This is just a uh, piece of steel. And its job is to take power and put it to both sides. And of course, any good engine proje project requires like 27 tiny little turns because you can't move the, uh, the wrench very far. Okay, and there's the bus. Let's see how hard these suckers are to get out. Okay, I was able to break them loose. That's a relative term. fight with these things two-handed you get the general idea okay so I got one spark plug out and I got the new one threaded um, anti-seize paste on it and uh, it's installed let's get the other one out I've got it uh, almost loosened and now I've lost my wrench there it is I've got my wrench all right so let's see what we can do it's almost finger tight But not quite. And these actually, this is a Westerby 12D and uh, 12C, 12D. What's the difference? I don't know, but this is a 12D. But all the instructions for it, the manuals are all 12C and they seem to be identical. All right, so this thing comes right out. No special tool required as advertised. Just, uh, I think I'm using a 5, 6, that's like a 12 millimeter actually. So I'm using a 12 millimeter uh, crescent wrench. took the other one out and um, I was kind of expecting to see the glow plug tip completely corroded and it looked actually pretty intact so uh, I don't know but no matter what the case these glow plugs are very very old and even if I'm not getting electrical which is why they're not heating replacing the glow plugs is certainly uh, overdue so no matter what's going on this is still a good call. Come here, you. There we go, and there's the other one. And it, too, appears to be fairly intact. Um, 
I was expecting to see the glow plug tip completely corroded. That doesn't mean that it's any good, uh, but that's not what I was kind of envisioning. And we've got the new one here. I need two hands. So this is the old glow plug, and um, there's some carbonization on the tip. I don't know. Maybe it's bad, maybe it's good. Here's the new one. You can see side by side, they uh, same size. Um, obviously, the same part. And some anti-seizing compound. Put a little bit of this guy on. silvery paste. And, uh, let's get this installed. So what is anti-seizing compound? It's uh, so that when you want to take it back out again it's not essentially frozen into place and this stuff is you know high temperature it's for engines so I'm going to tighten these down this is going to be probably a two-hand job and then we'll get the electrical hooked up again and we'll see what happens who knows German engineering principle that nothing requires two hands for tightening. Okay, we'll wipe off the excess because it says so. A little extra seizing compound. It's not too much. All right, and then uh, we'll hook up the electrical. Put the bar back into place, the electrical bus bar, which is in my pocket. I might need two hands again. I'm gonna. Okay, so the new glow plugs are in. I have absolutely no idea what's about to happen here. Either this thing is gonna start up like a champ, or I've got a bad electrical connection. Let's find out. Let's turn on the, uh, the raw water. And uh, solenoid should be active. Let's see what happens. Give it about 20 seconds. I hate that buzz and beeping. to the glow plugs. electricity to the glow plugs. Is 
next step. Why do I have no electricity going, going to the glow plug? Yeah, so, okay. Well, some obvious problems is this electrical wire is uh, not connected to anything. And I'm not sure what that goes to. I've got to research that. And the bracket has, for the solenoid group, has simply fallen off. It's actually rusted through. So, I uh, probably need to replace that solenoid, find out what it is. Um, and if it's expensive and I can't replace it, i got to find that out. Uh, that bracket is certainly no good. And then, uh, this, uh, this wire here has not reacted well to the engine compartment. It doesn't get that hot in here, so I'm a little surprised what is going on to make this not react well. It's, I mean, the tape hasn't even melted, so... And this tape is nothing special. It's not high temperature tape. Uh, I'll figure it out. Well, good morning. It's another day on the Fighting Guppy. <clears throat> Last night was kind of cold, but I had my heater on, so it wasn't too cold for me. All right, so <clears throat> last time we replaced the glow plugs on the engine. And I say we, of course I mean me, because nobody else helps me on my boat. <clears throat> That's okay. It's a one-man show sometimes. Um, but that didn't fix the problem. So diesel engine needs heat in order to fire the pistons. It doesn't use a spark plug like a gasoline engine. There's a couple of ways of getting heat. The most common way is a glow plug. And we've been starting the engine on compression alone, which is hell on the starter and drains the batteries. And it's really not great. The, it can be done, but I replaced the glow plugs. They were old, had to come out. They were really old, but that didn't fix the problem. So I uh, looked at the solenoid. The solenoid is really old. Now, what is a solenoid? A solenoid is a type of a switch. And in this particular case, what happens is a small electrical current goes through the switch and it causes the switch to trip or flip, turn on, activate, whatever you want to call it. And that allows a larger connection to be made. It's different types of solenoids, different things. This one, a small current closes the contact and lets a large amount of current go through. And then when you release the small current, the large amount um, releases and it stops going through. Now, why do it that way? Lots of reasons. Most uh, common reason you'd want to do it that way is so that the the switch doesn't arc and fuse itself into a, a, a sealed or an activated position. That's the case here. So we're going to need a large amount of, uh, of 12 volt amperage going through a relatively small switch, and we want to do that with a solenoid. So I bought a new solenoid, like 40 bucks. It wasn't a big deal. And it's got a mounting bracket on it, so that solves the mounting bracket problem. We're going to pull off the old solenoid, um, probably clean and replace a couple of electrical contacts, put the new solenoid on. Fingers crossed, see what happens. So the lesser big part number is 24639. This is a replacement for 24639. Um, so on a valve. And all right, so here's the valve. And what we've got <clears throat> is it mounts onto, it's a 12 volt. It mounts onto the engine housing with these little brackets there. And a small electrical current goes through, boop, boop, and activates the solenoid. And then a large contact through these two larger bolts connects. So the activation, activation current will go through here, and the actual main amperage glow plug current will go through there. And this is what we're currently working with. So we've got a disconnected power cord there. It's actually a splitter, so I'll have to fix that. Not a big deal. And the solenoid has simply broken off. The, uh, the bracket, you can see, has just completely rusted through. And I was hearing this banging when I was sailing last time. I couldn't figure out what it was. So here's the old solenoid. And we'll uh, see if we can break loose these rusted bolts. And there's a circuit breaker there. And it still seems to be working. And um, I'll replace that eventually. Probably next, actually. And then pull this guy off. So we're dealing with one, two, three, four bolts. In theory, this should go quickly. Yeah, right. 
So step one in any project is make a sketch. And this way when you go back you can see how badly you screwed it up. All right, so we've got a 12 volt, and this is an awesome sketch. It's like practically perfect. So we've got our solenoid, it's got a 12 volt uh, system. So we've got the mounting brackets in the back. Um, there, got got a uh, couple of large terminals coming off to the side and those are represented by those diagrams and then I've got these two smaller terminals coming off to the front represented here now down below there's a thick red line a thick red wire coming to here there's a thin purple wire coming to here there is a thin black wire which is a grounding wire connecting here to here which will ground this. And this is a small circuit breaker here that I'm going to cross my fingers and hope I can get off without breaking it. And then the thick purple wire connects here. So um, I tried unbolting the old solenoid and it's just too fried. It's just too rusted. So we're going to clip the entire thing off and uh, hence the, uh, the diagramming. Clip the purple. This one's actually unbolting. Yeah, of course, it's going to take two hands. Okay. And here's the nasty old solenoid. Completely fried. It's actually even cracked, the housing cracked. So, yeah. And, you know, these things are pretty tough, but nothing lasts forever. And here's the new solenoid. So, we've got the old and the new. And, uh, sizes look pretty compatible. Looks like the threads might be slightly different, but that's not a big deal. Okay, so the new solenoid is in. Um, it's kind of hard to see. There we go. So it is mounted and the electricals are connected. And we re spliced the red to the double blues. And heat shrank those into place. And the one purple wire that we had to clip, we put a new. I splice onto it and bolted that down. The entire thing is mounted. Now, of course, to do all this, I had to take out the the uh, fuel bolt, the fuel feed, to get to everything. And of course, yeah, no no job is complete in the engine until you've taken everything apart. Now, what's going to happen when I energize it? I got no clue. All right, let's see what happens. Hey, got a preheat solenoid. <laughs> right away. The electricals are solid. Oh, that is so rare that it just works the first time. Woohoo! <laughs> yeah, pretty happy. The uh, new glow plugs and the solenoid worked like just perfect. So that is a. Uh, total four thumbs up for the replacement solenoid, uh, the new glow plugs, and it just started. Um, no muss, no fuss, it just fired right up. So another boat project, this one actually worked.